I start the slide show. Hide the slide show. Yes. Uh, let's. Uh, yeah, you can start, sir. Please okay. start. Okay. Good morning, uh, all of you. Uh, uh, today, uh, my name is uh, Narendra Kulkarni. I am working as a principal scientist at uh, Indian Grassland and Fodder uh, Research Institute, uh, Southern Regional Research Station, located at uh, Dharwad, uh, Karnataka. Uh, and today, <coughs> I'll be talking on the subject uh, uh, plant protection issues in forage crops and their impact on uh, animal health. Uh, the, the very first question uh, comes to any plant protectionist, whether it is entomologist or pathologist or any agriculture uh, uh, expert working in a different field. The very uh, first question comes is, uh, uh, whether really, really any insect pests and diseases uh, they occur in uh, forage crops, or uh, uh, whether these insect pests or diseases uh, needs any uh, control measures or uh, management uh, strategies. So this is a very uh, basic question uh, we have to frequently encounter and we have to answer for this question. So let us see how these. Uh, um, insect pests and as well as diseases and weeds and so many other things uh, they can effectively compete uh, for the <coughs> with the forage crops and how they impact uh, the quality as well as uh, quantity of uh, forage crops. So let us start uh, with a just brief uh, overview on how uh, the insect pests and how the diseases they really occur in uh, forage crops and uh, really how we should uh, tackle these uh, insect pests as well as uh, diseases. As you are aware, forage crops, uh, uh, it is a common perception that they are all uh, considered as uh, uh, low cash crops. So because when we are dealing with the low cash crops, so whenever any insect pest or diseases comes, so certainly it is a very um, tricky question to take a decision on plant protection with us whether we have to really go ahead with the plant protection measures, whether we have to invest on plant protection with uh, new generation chemicals, they are, most of the chemicals are very expensive. So whether uh, this plant protection issues does require in the forage crops and if, if we take up these plant protection issues, the whether we, after saving the crop, so whether the whatever uh, uh, profit obtained from these forage crops, so either through green forage, or through seed yield, whether it's really going to compensate the any plant protection issues we have taken in uh, forage crops. These are the frequently asked question and we have to take a proper decision uh, before taking any uh, 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 taking any decision. So apart from that, uh, as you are aware that uh, yes, we are dealing with uh, forage crops and uh, most of the forages are cut and feed uh, as a fresh fodder and uh, even many of them are uh, cut and stored as a silage or a dry fodder or a leaf meal and so many other methods of storing the, these uh, uh, forage crops. So many of the times the question also comes, so whenever uh, if we take any plant protection measures, with, especially with pesticides uh, for controlling insects or even controlling diseases or even sometimes uh, controlling uh, these weeds also, we may use uh, uh, several herbicides also for the management of weeds in uh, uh, forage crops also. So finally, what is the impact of these uh, pesticides on the animal health first because the uh, uh, forage crops are directly fed to the animals. So their impact is uh, directly seen on animal health and subsequently uh, animal products, whether it may be milk or milk products or animal products. And uh, finally, the impact on uh, human health. So how uh, these products after to uh, try to discuss
Hello, sir. Is sir audible? Hello? Can anyone among the participants say if sir is audible because... Uh, no, sir, no, no, no. It's not, not audible. audible. Sir, it is not audible now. It is audible. Can you say something, sir? No, no, sir. You are not audible. We can say something, but no, not audible. No, no, not audible. Sir, there is some issue with the laptop, I guess. Can you? Uh, only lip movement is there. No voice. It's not audible, sir. Yeah, I got that. I got that. Sir, please call to Parandra Kulkarni, sir. I think he might have uh, muted the mic. No, no, he has not. Okay. He has not muted. He has muted uh, his... Sir, uh, Kulkarni, sir, do one thing. Do one thing. Hello? Are you... Uh, yeah. Hello? Say something. Yes. Do one thing, sir. Close yeah. Skype on your computer. Right click the Skype icon at the bottom. Right click, right click. Yeah, the the green icon with a tick. Yes, yes, first one. Quit, 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 quit. Can you say something? No, do one thing, sir. Can you go to the Google Meet window? Yes. Uh, refresh the page. Uh, click on the reload page. Yes. Actually, Skype might have taken over the microphone. Can you unmute now? Again, at the bottom yeah. there is unmute. Yeah, you are yes. audible. Yes, you are audible. Yes, yes. Okay, shall I go to again present now? Yes, yes. Same procedure. Present now, entire screen. Yes, yes, perfect. Okay. Right. Yeah, I... let's go to the PPT. Minimize, minimize. Can you close the PPT? I think there is some load on your computer. Okay, one minute. Yes, minimize, minimize the meet. Yes, right click and close, right click and close. Okay, one minute. Close the PPT, yes, right click, right click. Okay, right click, close, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Now open the PPT again. One minute. Yeah, start, sir. Start the slideshow. Visible? Yes, yes, audible as well as visible. Okay, shall I continue? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. yes sir. Sir, voice is not coming. Sir, it's not audible. not audible, sir. Something happened again. Some, some cha changed your computer. Matade, Matade, Kulkana, Kerstail, Matade, Kerstail, Kerstail, not audible. No, sir. Not audible. Allah, new camera, the mic, Matarta, the Rato, headphone, a one earphone, a That is not, that is not the issue. He's not facing the issue with the. Um, Microphone. Okay. okay the source okay. of his audio is being changed automatically. So what? Can do? you go to meet? Yes. Again. Yeah, just a second. Just a second. Can you click at the top? Uh, this camera icon. Doctor, you you can help us because you are in the same system, na? Sir, he he no no he is he is presenting from uh, his residence. For residence. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Then we cannot help. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Microphone two, na. This, this, this is the, this is the problem. It should not be microphone two. 
it should be the audio source that that, that should be the mark can you refresh the page again sir but i think this is going to repeat if Re reload the page Basically, I think there are competing resources for his microphone. I think any desk or any other program might be using his mic again. Skype was one. Hello, yeah, Doctor Kupani. Yeah, hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, audible now. Audible? Yeah, yeah, audible. Can can you uh, present now and show your entire screen? I, I, I will check. I will check. Sir, can you clo close at the bottom tray? There is any desk, I guess. Can okay. you close that your program also at the red uh, red icon at the bottom system tray? This one. Yeah, close. Right click. Okay. Wait. Okay, okay. Can you close this uh, WinZip and other programs also? Okay. This one. Second one. Close, close, close. 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 Okay. Can you close this queue? What this yeah. is? What is this queue? Queue, queue is the, uh, that is the total security. Okay. Is it eligible? Can now? you uh, close right now? Yeah. Can you continue hide and continue with the PPT? Okay, one minute. No, it's perfect. Hello. Uh, Praja, uh, uh, share your slide. Okay, now. No, no, you're presenting. Minimize the meet or rather go to the PPT directly. Start the slideshow. Okay. Yes, continue. Start, start slide slideshow. Sir, start from third one slide. Minute. Okay, okay, I'm one minute. Yes. Slide show. Visible? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Can you hear my voice? Yes, yes. Sir. yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, my name is Narendra Kulkarni, working as principal scientist at uh, IGFRI Southern Recent, uh, Regional Research Station at Harvard. And today I will be speaking on uh, plant protection issues in forage crops. So, <laughs> When you are not hearing my voice, I was telling about uh, uh, the plant protection issues of forage crops. So this is a very frequently asked uh, question by even more, uh, even uh, by my own uh, counterparts or colleagues or uh, working in uh, uh, other institutions. So whether any really insect pests and diseases occur in the forage crops, and whether these any insect pests as well as uh, diseases require any control measures by uh, using of any insecticides and whether uh, this pest, uh, even including weed manage, whether it is a really any problematic in the uh, forage crops, whether they require any management with the herbicides and other things. These are all the frequently asked uh, questions we hear. Yes, the answer is yes. Yes. When we started going these uh, uh, forage crops like any other uh, uh, conventional agriculture crops by using all the modern agronomic practices, by spacing, irrigation, fertilizer, then automatically over a period of time, this pest and uh, diseases, they have acclimatized with the forage crops. And now, um, in many cases, uh, uh, these forage crops require plant protection measures with uh, unconventional methods or organically acceptable methods, but uh, certain situations where the pest and disease uh, incidents, when they go out of hand, yes, we do need uh, plant protection uh, measures with uh, insecticides, fungicides, or even with herbicides also to control weeds and other things. And uh, ultimately, whenever we use pesticides, and definitely it will have a direct impact on the animal health. So whenever we take up any plant protection measures, the pesticide residues are carried to the animal first, and then later uh, to the animal products, whether it may be milk, 
or any other elbow products and finally affecting the human health so in this aspect we'll briefly touch about uh, what are the possible insect pests and diseases which occur which require really any um, uh, management uh, practices and uh, finally if any pesticide residues issues and other things how to tackle about those issues okay so let us begin with uh, the first slide of how the losses the so losses in case of forage crops due to various pests and diseases to take example of even uh, urea so even in all diseases may together for more than 50% loss whether it may be purple rot or whether it may be rust or whether it may be anthracnose uh which may be a leaf blight shoot fly nematodes including insect pests also and whether it is in the pearl billet or in case of mage also uh many diseases uh, may be sleep blight rust and problem of nematodes stem borer shoot fly and of recent uh, recent this even uh, a fall army worm of uh, sporoptera fusi pala causing a big loss even in our forage uh, mage also because it doesn't distinguish grain mage or a uh, forage mage and uh, oats even though it is very popular uh, fodder crop in uh, northern india so in, not a very popular crop in southern india but still there are problems of diseases nematodes and even uh, aphids problem and copi like even grain copi we have a forage copi but uh, yes very frequently infested with uh, diseases like in a mosaic disease now we call it as bean mosaic spots and insects especially aphids as well as pod borers very severe problem and uh, even some minor uh, uh, forage crops even this gaur is not a very popular crop in southern india yes of course lucerne is uh, number one uh, uh, leguminous uh, forage crops in southern india and uh, very frequently infested with uh, insect pest uh, mainly aphids and apart from aphids we have insects like even caterpillars and other sucking insects also and yes of course diseases like rust and uh, leaf spot they always cause a problem in uh, lucerne and uh, even we have uh, some serious cascuta uh, problem in uh, lucerne <clears throat> it also needs uh, very uh, um, attention and management in some cases and uh, very fortunately grasses so most of the grasses we are growing here are relatively they are free from uh, most of the pest and diseases and most of the cases uh, these grasses uh, especially perennial grasses uh, uh, do not require much uh, attention whether with any uh, insecticide or for a uh, disease management practices so looking into some uh, few cultivated grasses i think you already you have exposed to previous classes of way and as well as agronomic practices of different uh, cultivated grasses so about this napier grass guinea grass bicaria and so many other crops so most of these grasses okay as i already said they are already and they are almost free from insect pest and diseases i won't say they are 100% free from pest and diseases yes there is an incidence but these grasses have an ability to recover the damage and compensate the yield okay so maybe insect pest like maybe spittle bugs and we have a grasshopper stink bugs leaf cutting ants so many insects they occur but most of the times uh, the these grasses have the ability to recover themselves and uh, many of the cases our intervention is not required so this uh, this uh, sir again not audible mm -hmm. Hello. You got disconnected again. Yes, yes, sir. Please check, sir. There is some network issue at his place. Hello, sir. Can you hear us? Hello. can you say something sir no you are not audible again 
Do you have any other computer, sir? Sir, you would have to go to Meet and refresh the page. Google Meet. Can you disable your antivirus for now? Maybe that might be not allowing use of camera. Sir, can you go to the Google Meet and uh, refresh the page? Yeah, well, it is uh, look like. Uh, yeah, can you unmute? Yeah, sir? I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yes, yes, sir. Now it's audible. Sir, as you said, uh, that Google, uh, you are uh, my quick kill, uh, maybe preventing uh, this program. What I feel, I don't know. Uh, can you start with the presentation, sir? Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Visible? Yeah. No, can you st uh, start the present now? Is it audible? Then you yes, are yes. audible as well as visible. Okay. But you need to present your present. presentation. Yeah, present now. Okay. Can I continue? Yeah. Can you click on the present now and choose the entire screen? Okay, one minute. Are you using Google Chrome or some other browser? A uh, Google Chrome, sir. Yeah, that should not have any other issues. Yes, yeah, sir. Go to the PPT. Yeah, start the slideshow. Visible? Yes, audible as also. Okay. Shall I continue? Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Most of the cases, as you heard, uh, this uh, locusts recently have caused a lot of havoc in uh, Rajasthan and they have entered uh, even uh, Haryana and entered even Central India and uh, even parts of Uttar Pradesh and Noida. So during that time, uh, there is a lot of uh, 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 this thing, apprehension uh, that uh, yes, these crossovers, uh, uh, they have almost uh, locusts, they have devastated whatever the green material uh, coming on their way, even our or most of our forage crops are also not exception for the damage. So during such cases, yes, the spraying of this uh, neem seed kernel extracts or and uh, neem formulation and uh, the many because in such cases uh, uh, intervention of government is needed to take care of an aerial spray and uh, community approach in managing uh, these locusts. But such incidences are uh, very rare because this locust uh, infestation is uh, uh, not uh, uh, very frequent or yearly occurring because only after a um, few decades back there was a problem and suddenly this year uh, it has occurred. Uh, and anyway, whenever such incidences comes, we have to be prepared with uh, management uh, options, uh, like even uh, 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 applying this uh, melathion dust and uh, putting up the trenches, burning and killing of such locusts. So whenever a uh, serious incidents, uh, especially on the uh, grasses. So <clears throat> looking into the cereal crops, uh, the first one is our uh, uh, forest sorghum. So, like any other grain uh, sorghum, we have a uh, annual uh, foray sorghum, but uh, it's not very popular. So earlier, it's very commonly called as this uh, sweet sorghum uh, variety. But when uh, uh, now we are uh, <coughs> available with this uh, perennial sorghum, so we call it as this uh, uh, COFS varieties, Koimathur uh, foray sorghum uh, uh, varieties, CO 29, 30, 31. So these have become very popular. So now farmers' uh, acceptability is very high. And uh, now across southern India, you can see this forage sorghum is very, very 
popular uh, forage crops so grown uh, across uh, the southern india so uh, these uh, forage uh, sorghum varieties uh, they are uh, mostly resistant to most of the insect pest and diseases so many of the times uh, interventions are not required and very rarely it requires any attention uh, only little bit of management with the uh, uh, fertilizer and uh, intermittent some irrigation uh, this crop can be maintained very well but still in some cases uh, we may get the incidence of shoot fly so like any uh, this grain sorghum or a, uh, annual uh, sorghum shoot fly uh, incidence comes immediately after sowing within 15 days or a month so it requires sometimes uh, management uh, because it causes a dead heart and sometimes uh, there will be a loss of uh, crop so in such cases uh, we need uh, this granular application it's very most practical and simple way of uh, putting this pesticide granules especially carboflurane with 3g or 4g 10g in the whorl of the plant even 10 kg of such uh, uh, granules are required uh, for a one acre of a crop so with that i think we can able to manage this uh, uh, shoot fly so whenever any incidents sometimes when the sowing is very late and uh, in such cases uh, there will be some chances of this shoot fly incidents otherwise uh, with normal uh, timely sowing and with the required uh, seed rate and well maintained population we can overcome uh, the popul- uh, problem of this uh, uh, shoot fly okay stem borer also sometimes it may cause problem uh, by similar way of uh, how shoot fly is causing this uh, dead hearts and even stem borer yes stem borer also cause uh, dead heart in uh, uh, sorghum especially even annual sorghum and perennial sorghum also to some extent not a very severe issue but similarly uh, because it is a lepropron insect directly uh, causing damage by entering inside the stem so in such cases we require uh, spraying of this chloropyrifos uh, 2 ml per liter because it is a contact insecticide so it can be uh, sprayed and uh, taken care of this uh, uh, stem borers so sometimes even putting granular application which we have used for shoot fly incidents will also going to help uh, and manage this uh, stem borer also so aphids also cause uh, the problem so in case of uh, sorghum because uh, when the aphids come they come in very large numbers so we have a complex of cyzapis graminium uh, rafflosata medis and melanopsis second so these are the aphid uh, complexes sometimes uh, they come in uh, sorghum and uh, especially as you know that these aphids sap sucking insects they come in large number they multiply very fast they multiply with uh, even uh, over parity and uh, these insects ability to secrete honeydew and attracts lot of sooty mold and fungus growth and that and indirectly it affects the photosynthetic ability of the plant and uh, yield quality as well as quantity so drastically drastically get affected so when the Uh, leaves are turned to black and is all affected with the sooty mold so such forage is unfit to cut and feed the animals so in such cases yes we need to take care of these aphids by spraying uh, insecticides like dimethoate or imidacloprid uh, it helps when the pest is pest load is very high so otherwise uh, we have uh, this uh, alternate methods like uh, using of neem based formulations we can spray up this azaradictin or neem seed kernel extract so they are very effective and the ready made available neem formulations just by you spraying with 2 ml per uh, liter so it's going to help in managing these aphids and we have several entomopathogens also for the management of aphids so especially with the spraying of this verticillium we can uh, very effectively control these uh, aphids also so plenty of natural enemies also naturally they may be taking care of these aphids the ladybird beetles chrysopa hover fly and parasitic wasp other things but unfortunately the aphid population that grows so fast that it outnumbers the parasites and predators so in such cases uh, it's very difficult to rely on biological control because aphid uh, multiplication uh, maybe 
10 times faster than uh, these parasites and predators so in such cases uh, we have to depend on other methods other than just relying on natural enemies for the control of uh, uh, of it by using either chemicals or botanicals or even by pesticides and we have problem with these cutworms also so mycena separata is also a problematic in uh, both sorghum as well as maize so these are all nocturnal insects so uh, especially they are very active these larva during the night they can cut and feed on this uh, young seedlings so poison baits are recommended so poison baits are very effective and recommended for such insects so by using uh, um, any insecticides so especially available insecticides chlor pyrifos or even uh, dime to it mixing with any chlor and jaggery and making a small balls in the form of bait and just spreading randomly in the field especially in the evening hours because when these larvae they are very active and moving in the night from one field to other they are gregarious and they attack seedlings cut and feed in such cases if you throw these poison baits in the field so it interrupts their movement and the larvae gets killed so this is the insect which has created the problem in our uh, state as well as in country from the last two year so when this uh, maize fall armyworm called sporoptera fusiferda when this entered our country especially in 2018 july so first report was from uh, university of agriculture and horticulture science campus from shimoga so it was reported in just two years back and within a two year i think this insect has almost spread entire country so it is just not a serious threat on grain uh, maize so it started eating uh, almost all host uh, crops which are available so all the cereals and it has one migrated on oil seeds and started feeding on even cotton and other crops also so even our forage crops are not spared so even uh, our african uh, tall variety is highly you now susceptible for this uh, sporopter fusiferda so fall over me one so karnataka is a big reason to worry because we are the number one state in producing this grain maize so yes uh, even in forage maize also there will not be any difference in nature of damage as well as extent of uh, damage so because of this we have to really uh, worry about this insect and we have to take care of this insects in both season whether it is in kharif as well as in rabi so even though our preliminary studies say the incidence is high during the kharif compared to rabi and uh, summer so the insect looks like this so many of the plant protection workers especially entomologists or even pathologists working closely on this crop may be very familiar with this uh, insect so just with the so just with the uh, uh, this thing by even with naked eyes or even with uh, just with the help of a small handheld lens so you can very clearly see the demarcation uh, of this insect so there is an inverted y shaped structure on the head of this uh, larvae and you can see the spots uh, at the end of the larval body you can see four spots which in uh, uh, this uh, rectangular uh, shape so you, you can very clearly identify this insect at uh, field condition okay so this is the sporoptera fusiferda so its counterpart this uh, sporoptera litera so uh, this is a very uh, very common insect in our uh, subcontinent in india and even in asia also but from the last two years uh, this insect now it is slowly even uh, replacing our existing earlier uh, insects so even sporoptera litera is slightly even more taking the damage uh, and incidence of uh, sporoptera litera also so these are the some pictures of uh, this sporoptera fusiferda so how it can damage so it can damage i think entire the, all the stages of the maize yes, maize is the number one preferred host yes it infests one other crops also including sorghum uh, and other uh, crops also so if you see that uh, first the pinhole symptoms and uh, started scraping and feeding on the leaves and uh, there is a lot of uh, fecal material uh, is inside uh, the horal of the base plant and uh, at the later stage uh, this uh, 
call herbivorm uh, it has the ability to cause and damage one developing crops also so yes if you see the the simple uh, the life cycle and how it cause the damage and spreads yes the adult insect uh, they are nocturnal and uh, they lay eggs just 10 to 15 cm above this ground they, by choosing the below leaf okay so by laying the eggs the fecundity is very high it ranges from even 300 to 500 also so when uh, these eggs hatch and uh, they when they convert into the first insta larvae though so they started scraping uh, these leaves and these insects uh, especially when they start growing up from the insta wise so first insta second insta third insta fourth insta so they slowly keep on moving uh, at the upper direction on the maize plant they started eating matured leaves and older leaves and then uh, when it attains adulthood of fourth and fifth insta it start damaging even cobs also so once uh, the larval stage is completes and this larvae falls to the ground for the pupation so the pupation may be for 7 to 10 days or it may even up for up to 2 weeks so when the adults emerges then again start its life cycle continuing uh, from laying the eggs and uh, this uh, larvae started causing the damage but this insect has an ability to fly of around 100 km in a day so most of these adults they travel during the night so they may travel about 100 km per day just imagine uh, the spread of this insect so within 10 days it may be crossing even state also so it, it, it may fly over more than 1000 insect uh, km so imagine within 10 days it may it may be in karnataka today and uh, within a week it may enter uh, andhra pradesh or then within a week it may enter chatisgarh or orissa like this this insect i think uh, within very short span of time it has spread uh, across the country so in 2008 i think as you already aware it entered <coughs> from two usa and then through african countries so then it has entered india maybe due to various reasons through either shipment of uh, seeds or from any other source or maybe due to some with quarantine issues so there are uh, several uh, parasites and predators they are am i edible hello yes sir audible audible yes sir audible okay thank you thank you sir. so there are several uh, parasites and predators okay they are reported on this training uh, aikku idu sir so plenty of parasites uh, they are reported on this uh, insect and fortunately we have those parasites in our country it may be trichogramas parasites and uh, glepantilis uh, creatinoki and uh, we have campylitis chloridae campylitis chloridae is very popular parasites in our area especially in karnataka also it's very number one parasites on earlier it was uh, very useful on helotis management so now these parasites are helping in managing this insect but of course as i said always depending on parasites or predators it is most of the times it is very risky because the number of parasites and predators the always are almost maybe one tenth one hundredth of what insect pest we see if you see 1000 insects we may see only 10 or 15 parasites or predators so it's very very difficult to match the multiplication of uh, uh, such polyphagous insects so because of such cases we do need intervention of uh, pesticides yes so now for the management of uh, sporoptera frugiperda so we are recommending uh, insecticides so like uh, imamectin brenzoate proclaim it is popularly called as a proclaim what it is being used on heliotis and sporoptera same chemical can be used for a uh, um, sporta furgipada and even thiamethoxam we call it uh, popularly called as actra that chemical also be used for the management and uh, new generation uh, insecticides like uh, chlorantiniprol so now that is the chemical which is being uh, recommended for this uh, Uh, sporoptera fusiperda uh, for the management 
uh, then coming to the oats so oats as i said it is not a very popular crop in our uh, uh, southern india but yes of course this oats uh, comes up very well in northern part of the india and yes this crop suffers with the uh, aphids especially bird cherry aphid is a serious problem in north india when we took this oat crop uh, in our uh, regional center from the last 3 years we are going and seeing this crop and very healthy crop and most of the time still it will be free from any pest and diseases and we were given a trial to take up uh, this oat crop for the management of aphids and from the last 3 years there was no incidence of aphids so uh, so very healthy crop and uh, so this insect uh, it's not able to colonize so whatever aphid species available existing in our areas like whether it is maybe op aphids uh, aphis cracklora or p aphid that is type and by some so they are not infesting this uh, crop so now yes management of this uh, aphid is restricted to only one in northern uh, conditions just for the information of the participants i am saying this yes yes it can be managed with any other botanicals like neem or verticillium lecani or when the incidence is very high they may try with some systemic insecticides also again another insect in case of lucerne so when i am dealing with the forage legume yes this lucerne is the number one uh, forage legume in our uh, southern india and in karnataka also it is coming up in very big way so now acceptability is very high so this is grown in rabi season excellent varieties especially rl88 is a perennial variety is available yes farmers can take up this variety and they can maintain this crop for even 3 to 5 years yes every year they get 11 cuts uh, excellent uh, proteinaceous uh, fodder so per day i think by just providing 2 kg of this green fodder to the animal there will be a substantial substantial uh, increase substantial increase in the milk yield and uh, as well as uh, there is a substantial increase in the fat content of the milk so because of this uh, lucerne uh, supplement so in karnataka now farmers are uh, taking up this crop in large way so by, wherever there is a possibility of uh, irrigation is there so they can take up this crop especially in uh, rabi season yes uh, of course even some farmers have come forward to take up uh, this crop uh, for seed production also because uh, uh, this is a very good crop for uh, seed production and uh, as we are aware there is a, always there is a 75% shortage of any forage seed in the state so any farmer who comes forward and take up uh, a venture of this uh, producing seeds especially forage uh, legumes so this lucerne what you are seeing this picture this lucerne weevil so scientifically call it as an hypera postica okay this uh, polyopteran insect okay again fortunately not there in southern india yes for the information of uh, participants i am saying this this is a pest very serious in central india including even punjab haryana area also and southern india it, uh, it's almost free from this insect because Uh, this there is a specific requirement of cold uh, nights during the winter so for the completion of the life cycle of this insect so there is not prevalent especially in southern india so this insect is not seen uh, in southern india so especially during the period of january and february you can see uh, so this insect both adult as well as larvae they have the ability to defoliate hello defoliate uh, this crop see as adult uh, they over winter in plant debris okay once after emergence they feed uh, new lucerne and they have the this uh, ability of damaging uh, even flower buds also so when they start eating leaf as well as flower buds yes ultimately it affects even the seed production also so management strategies yes burning and even chemical spraying uh, is recommended especially in january february months and there are pathogens entomopathogens they are available for this uh, insect and contact insecticide especially okay we have insecticide with carbaryl and melathion or even chlorpyrifos by using this uh, this insect can be managed 
Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. So now, uh, looking into the the sucking insects in uh, office. Sorry, in Lucerne. So this is very very important information. Who were all uh, taking the forage production uh, just for even uh, uh, not just for uh, seed production. Even just want to cut and feed this uh, green fodder. Yes, this insect should be watched, especially in uh, Karnataka or in southern India. Yes. This looser nephids, they bound to come. They bound to cause damage. So especially this P nephids, Acrytosiphon pisum, scientifically called as Acrytosiphon pisum. And uh, when you take up uh, sowing, especially in the rabi season, okay, the recommended month is uh, October. So sometimes even it may be delayed up to November also. Fine, no problem. But this insect starts appearing from beginning of the January. and uh, these aphid incidence is very high and very peak at the month of february and even march also and uh, yes we are giving cut every month we are taking this uh, green fodder so while such cases also automatically when we are cutting and feeding this lucerne to the animals so ultimately so when you are cutting and feeding the lucerne which is infected with aphids yes definitely it is going to affect the animal health so it may not kill the animal so when you are feeding lucer infected with the aphids so it 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 will have an impact on uh, animal productivity so so because of this uh, this insect needs to be managed and we have to feed the animal which is free from uh, aphids okay so even this insect uh, sometimes uh, because of this volticellium wilt also associated with the uh, this uh, p aphids and sometimes there will be a loss of uh, crop you can see in the field so and during the karif season so when you are keeping this uh, lucerne for the because it is a perennial crop so these acrytosiphon pisum comes during january february and it disappears once you harvest the crop because now we may take up uh, seeds in uh, may month so then again we will get give the cut from january onwards okay this acrytosiphon pisum they slowly disappear from the lucern and we again keep on taking cut in july august september during that period yes during the karif season we will come across with another aphid called this copia aphid aphis cracura especially july august month yes this insect again attacks on the this replace the acrytosiphon which time it is not seen then this aphis cracura comes so this is a black aphid uh, which is seen on uh, copi so it attacks on this uh, lucerne and the the danger associated with this insect is yes it injects the power, powerful toxin to the plant while feeding because it is a they are all phloem feeders yes they can inject toxin and they have ability to cause uh, even diseases uh, viral diseases also so it is readily distinguishable from uh, its color so because this is the only black aphid aphis uh, cracura which is found on the aphids so when you come to management there will not be any difference whether it is acrytosiphon pisum or aphis cracura so management aspects the remain same for any aphid okay so we keep on monitoring this crop yes there are some uh, etls economic threshold levels uh, they are fixed for this aphids based on the height of the plant so it varies from uh, even the karif to rabi also sometimes but before taking of any treatment uh, or management as i said al always uh, you just remember our forage crops as a low cash value crop okay you don't compare with the uh, fruits and vegetables like a grape or pomegranate or cotton or any vegetables okay they can take up any expensive chemical as a plant protection measure they spray it and uh, yes within few days they can sell and end cash by selling in the market so it's not possible in the forest crop we cannot recommend very expensive chemical to the uh, farmers because very poor farmers marginal farmers growing in small area yes of course sometimes when there is a serious problem of disease and pest comes we have to recommend with some alternate methods or pesticides with 
relatively economic pesticides. We are aware of uh, new generation chemicals as well as old generation chemicals, but still looking into the value of the commodity, we recommend uh, the relatively uh, cheap chemicals which can take care of uh, these insects. So there are various factors before recommending based on plant height, beneficial insects. Yes, when the number of beneficial insects are more, then we can wait before spraying any insecticides and cutting schedule. Sometimes if he has decided to cut his forage crops, so then there is no need to take off a uh, plant protection because when he is spraying today and again cutting is loosened uh, within a two days, then what is the use? So looking into the cutting schedule also, then there is no need of uh, taking such plant protection measures. And uh, species of aphids present, yes, of course, Acrytosipan by some uh, comparatively less serious in comparison with aphids cryptor. And there are other methods also to manage the uh, this uh, lucerne aphids, biological control, yes, plenty of parasite predators, they are naturally available. When the population is low, they will take care. So when the aphid the population outburst, they will outnumber this natural enemies then we have to take up at least spray with the neem insecticides okay so neem insecticides azuradictin commercial formulation of 3000 ppm 5000 ppm 10000 ppm i think just 2 ml per liter is enough to take care of uh, uh, this aphids so we may need insecticides systemic insecticides like uh, imidacloprid so when these neem insecticides if they fail to control this uh, aphids, otherwise there is no need. So just have an overlook of uh, other insects, so which appear on the lucerne. So they may not require uh, any plant protection measures, but just for the information, we have leaf hopper problems. Yes, sometimes they may cause some damage. And we have caterpillars, we have thrips and semi loopers, leaf miners, tree hoppers. Spider mites, especially in uh, December, January, drier months, and very occasionally these mealybugs they appear uh, on the lucerne and leaf webbers. Yes, collectively they cause a little bit damage. But looking into the cowpea, yes, again cowpea aphid. As I said, the surface cracker and lucerne. The original uh, the host is the cowpea. It is the number one insect on cowpea. It has ability to cause damage and even spread the uh, bean mosaic virus also you can see the number of uh, aphids congregating on the growing pod as well as below leaf how can you cut and feed such fodder to the animal no so of course it won't kill the animal but it affects animal health and productivity aphid as i said okay so whenever in lucerne or copy you see the predators uh, fortunately, a lot of predators, uh, these coccinellid predators as well as parasitates, so they come uh, uh, and uh, aid in managing this uh, aphids. Okay, this is the uh, grub of uh, ladybird beetle. So you can see adults of ladybird beetles of different species. And leaf hopper, as you said, in copy, yes, the upward curling of news and uh, there is a damage caused by this insect especially in september month so there is a problem of uh, yes this leaf hopper mm. yes borer complex as i said uh, the cowpea like uh, which is leguminous crop like any chickpea or pigeon pea it attracts uh, uh, most of the borers also suppose when we are uh, growing forage crop and cutting the cowpea before the pod formation, okay, fine, we can escape from these insects. But sometimes we keep these as a for a dual purpose. So dual purpose means we would like to take up some seeds also. Sometimes we'll uh, concentrating on uh, uh, dried uh, leaves of this cowpea as in uh, uh, to feed the animals in a uh, lean period. In such cases, yes. So whenever we leave cowpea for the pod maturity, so these borers, they occur on the copy, whether it is a legume pod borer, whether it is a spiny pod borer, whether it is a ground pod borer, or it is a copy seed moth. So this is a complex. So they have ability to cause damage on copy seeds. Yes, management, uh, borer 
complex requires management if you are interested in collecting seeds also. So like any other uh, very standard recommendations for our heliotis of armiger and red gram or in chickpea like this spraying of uh, uh, even uh, NPV earlier it was available now it is not available. So using this trico cards or uh, installing light traps and even spraying with uh, insecticides also. So we can manage uh, these uh, copy podoboros so if our target is to get the seed yield. So a lot of depolyators also we have a spilosoma obliqua in case of uh, copy as we are targeting in forage copy on a green forage yield of leaves. Yes, these insects sometimes they may cause even more than 50% of depolyation in copy. So in such cases if, if our target is to cut and feed this forage copy, so then we have to ultimately manage this uh, defoliators so by using neem insecticides so other uh, defoliators our earlier product litera akejanata and leaf rubbers spoilizoma flea beetles all this cause uh, the damage okay am i audible hello yes sir yes yes sir, yes, sir. okay okay so then uh, we will have a quick look on uh, some diseases, okay, not in very detail, but we will have some quick look on forage diseases. Yes, of course, uh, most of these forage crops like in, uh, this is only in annual sorghum, it may not be a big problem in our perennial sorghum. Charcoal rod, downy mildew, rust, anthracnose, sooty stripe, zonate leaf spot, all these diseases they come. So there are various management, anyway we will be giving in the script also, there is no need to study all the symptoms as well as management for such diseases. This is a comprehensive chart which I am showing and again it will be given in the form of article and uh, you may be receiving at the end of the training some booklet which contains articles. We will be providing all the information, all these chemicals especially for the seed treatment. So this charcoal rod, downy mildew and many of the cases we recommend fungicide treatment. So whenever uh, <coughs> using this forest uh, seeds even before uh, here, uh, we not edible sir hello you're not audible again. Hello? There is some connection issue, I guess, because he got logged out, I guess. Yeah, yeah he got logged out. Hello? Sir, not audible, sir, no. Hello? Can you refresh the page, sir, again? At the middle of the page, can you click and press, right click and press reload? Can you unmute yourself? Yes. Please unmute yourself now. Adibu? Yes, yes. Adibu? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. again, present now and uh, select the entire screen. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. yes, sir. Okay, okay. So then quickly uh, see into the. the you need to start the PPT, sir. You need, to, you need to click on the present now option. Okay, okay. One minute. Present now entire screen. Click on the screen. Okay. Share. Entire screen. Okay. Share. Yes. Again, need to go to the PPT first. 
now yes yes visible yes can you press hide okay yes shall i continue yes yes okay so even we have some diseases especially this rust and lip spot so these two we consider it as a major diseases in loser so other things we may not give much importance yes seed treatment with even thyram or uh, dithanium 45 at the time of uh, sowing so it helps in controlling this rust as well as leaf spots so most of the times you may not require even foliar spray with fungicides also and these are the other minor uh, things we are uh, i will not uh, go into the details of this pearl mill like and other thing so mage also most of the times yes uh, even seed treatment is enough to take care of uh some diseases like downy mildew and other thing so we may not require uh, foliar spray and even in cowpea also so yes mosaic virus is a problem so we have to identify those plant and uh, segregate them and uh, destroy them and vector management yes sometimes managing vectors with spraying systemic insecticide like low like uh, dimethoate to manage the aphids and other things recommended so otherwise sometimes we uh come across with this uh, root rot problem as well as wilt so even uh, treating seeds with uh, trichoderma or even drenching uh, the field with trichoderma definitely it has helped in managing this uh, fungal diseases so sometimes we recommend uh, uh, drenching of field with even fungicides also if uh, trichoderma is not to control the diseases so oats diseases yes not uh, very severe in southern part yes in northern india so there is a problem of this uh, diseases especially when it rises up to near root rot and other thing even seed treatment also helps in southern india for especially stylozanthus sometimes there is a problem of stylo uh, anthracnose so many of the times it, it is considered to be very hardy crop and uh, many of the times insect pest and diseases do not require any uh, control measures and in anthracnose the serious areas even seed treatment uh, is good enough to take care of the diseases and these are all some pictures yes many of you might have already seen these all smuts and ergots and so sorghum anthracnose leaf spots and downy mildew in case of lucerne also yes this leaf spot as well as uh, rust these two are considered to be important uh, diseases in uh, uh, lucerne uh in uh, kopi especially whenever we take up this kopi during the karif problem sometimes we come across the seeding rots and dry root rot also so bacterial blight may not be a problematic but mosaic virus yes sometimes we get uh, this bean mosaic virus of this kopi and uh, wilt also as i said seed treatment and sometimes drenching of the field helps in this uh, uh, managing this diseases and there are some pictures of uh, healthy and infected uh, kopi plants color rot also in uh, rabi sorry in karif season in it will create some problem and definitely this fungicide uh, sorry uh, trichoderma seed treatment as well as drenching helps for managing this rot and some sorghum uh, sorry some storage pest just we have a quick look of few slides even in storage also we have a problem of uh, insect pest like uh, grain or pulse storage so even in case of our loser we have a problem of the seeds chalcid very interesting is these all chalcids are never a insect pest in any crop because these seed chalcids are considered to be an uh, parasitoids okay and very exceptionally this uh, seed chalcid has become a pest of uh, loser and it will lay eggs uh, in the growing tender pots in the field itself so when the young ones hatch so they start feeding inside content of this lucerne seed and then come out so because of this chaffy seeds uh, sometimes whenever you take a soil hello 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 okay so these are the some important uh, storage uh, insect pests which are seen in any other uh, grain uh, or in pulses also so cereals and pulses like this anguimes grain moth and copra beetles lesser grain borer all are seen on this wheat so oat or sorghum or maize 
so even the storing of this maize seeds especially even forage maize seeds african tall so highly susceptible for all these uh, storage pests so, and even our forage cowpea powder cowpea varieties whenever you want to store for long period and it is a real headache because of this pulse beetle and many other times uh, most of the chemicals are going to be banned and no alternate methods are available and it is very big task to um, store these seeds especially for the longer uh, period and yes this cytopelus horizae is also problem and we have this sort of the grain beetle in a uh, maize infesting the, in the storage african uh, tall uh, maize variety and this brood seeds are a big problem while storing any forage copy seeds some because earlier we were even mixing with the melathion and other thing now melathion also not available now only in those who are storing in a uh, these seeds in a godown with the fumigation of aluminum phosphate and other chemicals possible otherwise uh, it is becoming difficult so whenever some seeds you can require a season keeping inside deep freezer also helps but most of the times uh, so it is very difficult to store uh, these seeds uh, for long time and uh, yes management even seeds at the time of harvesting proper maintenance of moisture inside must be dried and cleaned thoroughly and uh, keeping inside air tight uh, bins and uh, even storage structures now they can be fumigated with edb or aluminum phosphate <coughs> uh, very few available now restricted chemicals for this uh, storage of uh, uh, any grains or even fodder seeds also. so before looking into the aspects of pesticide residue other things we should have a quick look on beneficial insect because whenever we recommend any pesticides at the time of uh, peak flowering so it is going to be detrimental because lucerne is a highly cross pollinated crop and we have plenty of pollinators like apis serena floria and dorseta 100% cross pollinated crop so we need to take care of these pollinators so whenever we recommend any harsh chemicals so in such cases we recommend bio pesticides or in neem uh, insecticides okay so this is the huge pollinator fauna in the lucerne because lucerne even 90% seed setting is possible with the pollinators only otherwise there will not be any seed setting in uh, lucerne that's why we recommend keeping of bee colonies even one or two colonies per hectare even one colony per hectare is good enough uh, for the pollination of the lucerne crop uh, yes you see this lot of parasite sorry predators as well as grubs so there is a need to educate farmer to identify uh, the grub of uh, ladybird beetles because sometimes they look like any other pest even sometimes farmer may not distinguish what is aphid and what is the this coccinellid grub so sometimes before taking of any plant protection measures they have to ascertain and monitor the what is the pest load and what is the natural enemies available in the uh, their field so these are very commonly seen ladybird beetles in uh, lucerne ecosystem yes now of course uh, after looking into all the aspects so i have covered only important uh, forage crops other than this there are other many of the forage crops uh, and uh, even uh, fodder trees and other thing so most of the times nature takes care of these pest and diseases and many times we may not uh, intervene with any chemicals or pesticides to disturb the ecosystem only in these crops because as we have started taking up this in larger scale with the, all with um, recommended practices and irrigation and fertilizer these crops bound to be attacked with pest and diseases yes in case of maize in case of cowpea in case of lucerne we do require taking of plant protection measures but in other crops especially in grasses and other things so fortunately we will not intervene much with any of uh, the external uh, inputs to disturb the ecosystem yes of course many of the times what happens so we may think that we may not be using many of the pesticides in forage crops but pesticide residues and drifts and so many other things they may enter into the ecosystem they may enter to the animal uh, feed also because animal feed is not just prepared with only forage crops many of the crop residues our grain uh, cereal uh, and pulses residues they can be converted and used as an animal feed so when such crops are treated with many of the pesticides and other things the pesticide residues bound to come with this animal feed 
and many of the times contaminated irrigation water or even pesticide in fact uh, residues also entering into the chain so how this impact so as you are aware the pesticide residues is a big problem not just in uh, cereals pulses fruit crops is a big problem in uh, even uh, animal and animal products also now uh, even milk yes milk is you have you might have heard and read uh, even uh, human milk or even uh, what we are consuming is all uh, dairy milk are infected with many of the pesticides and you have seen plenty of pesticide residue cases in the milk samples pesticide residue in feed may cause a serious problem in dairy animals which could result in the loss of production it may affect even animal health and after that so whatever infected the milk milk products or animal products if you are consuming which are uh, containing pesticide residues yes of course ultimate end user is a human being it will affect the uh, human health also the residues not only affect public health but also cause the economic losses to the livestock industry not only these affect the health of the lost livestock and human beings but it affects the quality of the animal products also pesticide residues accumulates uh, in the animals either by direct contact with the pesticide or with the indirect contact so many of the cases it may be even indirect contact because when we are using crop residues when we are using the animal feed so they may be treated with insecticides or pesticides in their growing stage yes that residues may be carried when the feed is uh, prepared so even pesticides are used in crops for pest control and they leave the residues in the feed and fodder consumed by the animals so ultimately that pesticide when they consumed by the animal it enters into the milk chain or even in the uh, different milk products or animal products the source of contamination of feed and fodder may be direct spraying or by the drift from the other crops or may be contamination of soil and water used for the fodder production so many of the times we think that yes we are not using any pesticides in the fodder then how come milk is contaminated with the pesticide it is not so because there are so many things which is not in our control maybe the irrigation water or even contaminated the soil and even contaminated the feed and the concentrates so they percolate they carry to the milk and milk products so pesticide residue that is the plenty of pesticide residues are taken in, in our country so not just in fruits and vegetables even in milk and animal products also so if we just look at one or two examples residues of this organochlorin insecticide especially even endosulfan or ddt and all many of the old generation chemicals so many of the these pesticide residues they found in the uh, milk and even animal products because animal like human being uh, so whenever uh, any pesticide residue concentrates enters the body so they are stored in their fat bodies okay so over a period of time so <clears throat> it may be percolated in the milk or sometimes even in the animal product itself even various meat products so contamination was observed either in the chicken or goat or beef so many of the pesticide samples they collect uh, these uh, meat samples were collected and uh, estimated for the pesticide residues so many of the uh, products they were contaminated with the pesticides even milk samples many of the our indian states like uttarakhand or in any state they have collected the samples and uh, Uh, checked and many of the milk samples contains this chloropyrifos the chloropyrifos is one such chemical so uh, which which is uh, uh, probably i don't know recently there was a move from the uh, central insecticide board and uh, plant quarantine to ban and restrict most of the chemicals uh, including even chloropyrifos or dicofol or dimethoate many of the insects including carbaryl almost there will be 70% of pesticides which are in use now for the indian agriculture there was a propose to ban them by the december of 2020 itself so then there was a pressure pressure from even local uh, pesticide manufacturing industry or even from the farmers themselves to postpone that the ban because once these uh, chemicals they banned so it is very difficult for uh, on farmers and it it may have a negative effect on the food production because when 70% of chemicals are suddenly withdrawn 
we don't have any alternative with newer generation chemicals and most of the new generation chemicals are very expensive and they are only tried in cash crops so because there will not be any other option with the low value cash crops so because of that reason so that banning of those chemicals is withheld for a time being so probably they may be give some more time until the uh, the new chemical center will be market and uh, yes these are the samples in uh, contaminant with the dicofog and any other chemical these are just examples i am giving and this is the one uh, study they are showing that the number of milk samples tested of in most of the cities like bangalore bhubaneswar ludhiana bawati udaipur they have collected the milk samples and found that most of the milk samples are contaminated with the pesticides okay then pesticide contamination animal feed and fodder yes some of the ways by which pesticide enter animal system chemicals used in treatment of controlling the uh, ectoparasites of animals also they enter the chain of milk and uh, milk products or animal products and indigenous and concentrated feeds such as cotton seed cakes grains brands pulses yes they contaminate with pesticides feeding of contaminated with unconventional feed may be vegetable waste from the local market yes that contain pesticide residues drifting during spray of other crops the use of contaminated irrigation water and fodder growing fields pesticide dusting in orchards where fodder intervention is conducted yes we are now uh, coming up with this hot pasture system yes forages are grown in orchards like uh, mango so because ultimately mango is a high value crop needs to be treated for the powdery mildew or even needs to be treated for this uh, deep hoppers so yes pesticide sprays are required sometimes those drips are carried to the forage crops so pesticides from major groups such as argonium phosphate argonium chloride pyrethroids they may contaminate the feed also although pesticides are potentially toxic to farm livestock the main focus enters on residue accumulated in animal products destined for human consumption okay they may affect this animal health directly but finally it will have an impact on the human health because we are the consumers of the milk milk products or animal products yes finally so in india yes there is a genuine and urgent need to take steps and implement policies to establish the following so these policies are required to have a check on a pesticide contamination pesticide residues in milk milk products and forage feed concentrate a forage policy encompassing the plant protection chemical research and achieving forage security in combination with food security in future yes it's required there is policy is required and uh, tolerance limits safety limits acceptable daily intake of pesticides in animal feed and fodder based large scale filters yes of course in our country we have a one central apex body called cib and rc central insecticide board and registration committee plant quarantine and storage india it is located at faridabad india so anybody is interested can click on the website of cib and rc cib and rc yes you can have a look on what are all the pesticides which are registered in our country what are the pesticides which are used being used formulation wise which are registered in the country and what are the pesticides which are banned in our country all the comprehensive list you can find out on that website and try to get updated so before uh, uh, recommending any chemicals or pesticides what pesticides which are in the use and what pesticides we should not recommend so you can because this is the continuous process because pesticide recommendation is not a one time job so it is a continuous process as as new and newer molecules comes in the market older molecules especially organochlorine insecticide earlier then followed by organophosphate insecticides because of their long uh, persistent ability these insecticides were slowly they will be totally banned as well as phased out many of the european countries and american countries they already banned these insecticides we may need a little bit time to replace these insecticides with newer generation insecticides it may be chloronicotinoids or avermectins or igrs those will going to replace all old uh, generation insecticides yes maximum residue limits for pesticides in forage crops 
So it takes a lot of time to fix the MRL of uh, any insecticide chemical uh, for a particular crop. So earlier, uh, we have started exporting most of the fruits and vegetables. So when we are exporting any fruits and vegetables like a grape or a pomegranate or gherkin, whatever it may be, the importing countries, especially UK, European or American countries, they have some their standards. So they say that, okay, so whatever product you are uh, exporting to our country, so kindly meet the standards of uh, phytosanitary certificates and as well as your product, your end product should contain MRL, pesticide MRL below this, 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 this limit. So this is the standard set by, even though there is a codex standard for international uh, community, but advanced countries, especially UK and Europe, they have their own standards, even they are much stringent than the codex standards. So we have to meet those standards while exporting. But unfortunately, there is no regulatory system in the local market. Even though we have FSS AI, Food Safety Standards and Authority of India. Uh, but yes, of course, we may not be having such stringent measures. But when such stringent measures are absent, we have to follow the codex standards. So then environment risk assessment of the pesticides in forage-based cropping system. Then legal recommendation for the pesticide through the approval of apex body. So as I said, now it is a CIDRC, Central Insecticide Board and Registration Committee. So for any pest and diseases, yes, of course, they should take a lead in uh, registering these insecticides and fungicides or pesticides, whatever it may be, crop-wise. Yes, this is the crop and these are the insect pest and these are the officially recommended uh, uh, pesticides. So uh, in over a period of time, uh, yes, of course, why not in forage and fodder crops also? Establishing regulatory standards, so management practices of animals and legal punishment on using banned pesticides. Yes, this is lacking in our country because many of the banned pesticides are also still available in the market and still they are used in the agriculture. So definitely they will have an impact on our, uh, <coughs> when they are impacting on vegetable and fruits, automatically they will have an impact on uh, Milk, milk products or animal products. Also. Thank you. So with this, uh, I will complete uh, my presentation. Uh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience in between. It has created some problem. I regret for that. And now I request uh, participants. If you have any questions, uh, we can quickly uh, discuss uh, and try to answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Sir, there might be few questions in the chat. One of them is Sanjeev Verma. Sir, chemical pesticide can be can have side effects in animals or not? It's not a it's a rhetorical question. Basically, it does have uh, side effects. Uh, new generation pesticides are safe? Question mark. You can uh, stop the PPT and go to the chat. Yeah, the green icon uh, next to the people uh, joined. Can you click on that? Okay, one minute. Yeah, at the top, yes. Ah, yes. yes. In chat, no, no, move a bit left, left, okay. left. Move the cursor to left, left. Yes. Move the cursor to left, where there is a green dot. Okay. Where it is 78. So in time. 78, where it is 78. Can you see 77 people? One minute. Eh? Ah, here. Eh? Here. Yeah. Next to it is there is a chat icon. Yeah, click. Yeah. Okay. If there are any questions, they can ask directly on voice. Okay. Uh, better would be to ask directly rather than going through the chat itself. If you have questions, please ask. Yeah, okay. There is a question on uh, this pest and disease related to bursin. Okay, there is a question on bursin. <sighs> Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir, audible. Okay. Okay. So, yes, Barsim. Uh, uh, of course, yes, Barsim, in, especially in, we, in southern India, we never encounter any pest and disease problems. In northern India, yes, there is a severe uh, problem in case of uh, Barsim also. We, we get even Barsim, uh, this rot and Barsim uh, uh, rust also very big problem. 
So even seed treatment, as I said, uh, it's a very standard uh, practice. Uh, seed treatment with fungicides. Uh, so it is it is going to help uh, this bursting seed. Uh, Controlling this bursting, uh, especially even treating with trichoderma, also even treating with trichoderma, it helps in managing the fungal uh, diseases. Yes, there is one question: new generation pesticides are safe? Yes, of course. Uh, yes, well, one thing uh, when we uh, replace older chemicals, yes, there is a criteria for the new generation, especially new generation with uh, uh, like our mectins or IGRs. They are relatively safe and they can be used in a very low dose. Okay, when earlier when we were uh, using a 200 uh, gram active ingredient per uh, per acre hectare, now you are using 10 times less than the dosage of the older active ingredients. Okay, suppose when we are using one chemical, one liter chemical per acre, so now we are spraying with only hardly 30 or 40 ml of chemical per acre. So when we are using the new generation chemicals in a very low dose, ultimately they leave very less residue impact on the environment and they will have a very minimal effect on the non-target organisms. Also. Of course, I can say new generation pesticides are safe. Hello? Am I edible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, there is a question on uh, uh, African tall is more susceptible for storage than grain mage genotypes. Okay, of course, uh, I don't know because we have not uh, tried or studied in the genotypic wise the storage. Because as I seen, uh, so whenever we store either it is a cowpea or uh, uh, African tall mage. So they are all equally susceptible for any storage pest. So we have not come across with any uh, material which is resistant to this storage pest. Okay, which is the species of locust cause maximum uh, uh, losses in uh, Rajasthan? So uh, which uh, desert locust? Okay, desert locust which cause uh, maximum uh, damage in the Rajasthan, so I am not remembering the exact scientific name also. Uh, sir, may soft grain. Yes, of course, uh, uh, soft grain or because most of the maize genotypes, whatever we have tried and store here for the next generation, almost all uh, uh, this all maize uh, genotypes, they are equally infested with the storage pest and even uh, Pulses also, most of the pulses, all the copies, germplasm, they are equally susceptible to uh, brew chips. So we have not come across with any resistant uh, material for the insect pest. Organic pesticide promotion or research, any? Fine. Yes, of course, there is a um, organic pesticide promotion research. So because most of the cases, even in uh, storage of uh, insects, even storage of insects, we recommend uh, neem leaves, we recommend boric acid powder, we recommend uh, uh, storing with uh, this bajay leaf powder, uh, root powder and other things. So many of these methods are already available and even in foliar spray also. So many of the um, plant originated products and as well as bio pesticides, so they are being recommended uh, uh, for these crops to avoid uh, various leaves. So common uh, infestation in a maize legume intercropping in a temperament. Common infestation. Okay, when uh, maize uh, legume uh, intercropping, yes, of course, when you intercrop uh, maize uh, with any legume, but common infestation, as I said, now it is a uh, this uh, tall army worm. Yes, Prodoptera fusiferda. It is definitely uh, causing damage, whether it is a temperate or a tropical. Almost now, because it has even uh, come from the temperate environment only, so that is going to. Uh, cause a problem uh, in uh, maize also. So,
why chemicals ban after some period some years of use yes very good question because uh, like medicines also so whenever we um, generate any new chemical because that is not a long lasting answer or it is a continuous process because as you know that whether it is a insects or a pathogens they have the ability to develop a resistance they have ability to develop a resistance when over a period of time if you are using any insecticide for a long period of time so the insects they develop the resistance so that will not be an effective against that insect and even you might have heard about biotypes they have the ability to damage one resistant variety itself so like that they have the ability to uh, accumulate that pesticides acclimatize that pesticides and able to degrade that chemical and uh, secrete from their body without getting affected so because of that reason so these pesticides needs to be regulated so once in a 10 years after 10 years they lose their efficacy they do the resistance is developed against them whether it is a fungicide or insecticide then we have to and environmental factors see for example when organochlorine insecticides were released earlier there was a conception that we wanted chemicals should be effective for very long time because we thought that we should we should not use chemical for very frequently it should be very effective for a long time it has got other uh, impact when it is staying in the long time it will uh, impact on the non target animals it will affect the human health and it is stored in um, human beings inside the fat bodies and created lot of health problems so then uh, those chemicals were totally banned and replaced you heard the story of ddt when ddt was invented then when ddt was identified for its insecticidal property the person got the nobel prize for that but within a five decades the same ddt got banned so similarly the all these chemicals over a period of time they lose their effect take example in case of medicines also so whenever you see plenty of medicines they will be banned for every decade so whatever pain killer you are using 20 years back you cannot use it now because of the advancement in our knowledge advancement in the research or in the developing the resistance so due to this reason these chemicals won't be banned how to control army worm uh, organically in maize good question organically in maize it is possible so excellent biological control agent is now metarhizium relay earlier formerly it was called as numoria relay so now it is name is changed to metarhizum relay metarhizum relay is entomopathogen very effective and which is available in commercial formulation in many of the universities and many of the farms are selling and this metarhizum relay is very effective and it can be used at the rate of 2 g per liter uh, powder formulation uh, it controls uh, uh, this fall army one and many of the local methods also many farmers have tried neem formulations very effective and uh, uh, farmers especially in villages they have tried with their own uh, techniques by putting the sand inside the horal because this larvae survives inside the horal and when the horal it cause the damage and it will leave the fecal material so when you put uh, sand material inside this horal so you can able to kill this larvae suffocating the larvae and by engaging laborers and even uh, mechanically collecting and killing the larvae is also good technique and people have tried putting the soap solution water so when you prepare uh, this normal soap solution water and just put that soap solution water inside the horal so you can able to kill the larvae so these are all some uh, unconventional uh, methods by using this you can able to control this fall armyworm uh, organically so thank you sir thank you if any questions you can please ask sir i think we are gone way over our uh, allotted time okay so thank you on behalf of the participants and on behalf of the organizing committee okay it was a pleasure to have you uh, sir despite there were some hiccups okay it was such a wonderful thing. thank okay. you sir thanks a lot on behalf of the participants and organizing committee just and all the uh, parties involved thank you sir okay. thanks a lot few seconds second just few seconds i thank organizers for giving uh, this opportunity and uh, 
I apologize for any inconvenience in the beginning, so associated with some uh, sound and other things. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Participants may join back at two thirty.